Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Yeah. Got a great movie for you today. And, uh, you know, movies are teaching devices, but we need all kinds of helpful devices to take us into that experience of, of forgiveness. And um, I always call movies the modern day parables, but uh, yeah, some of you know the story, but I'll share it briefly for those of you that don't. Um, back in the 1990s, I believe it was, late 1990s, uh, I was driving through Pennsylvania, staying with a friend and uh, my friend, she had to get up and go to work. So she said, well, enjoy your day. And then as I prayed and meditated in the morning, the spirit said, uh, yeah, we're going to watch two movies this afternoon. And I said, two movies, like back to back. And he, yeah, yeah, that's it. So I went to a, this was the day, back in the day when you went to the video stores to rent the movies instead of uh, streaming them. But uh, I went in and, and was told to uh, rent these two movies. One was called The Game and one was called The Man Who Knew Too Little. And um, it was quite a profound afternoon for me because in both movies, there's, there's sets of brothers. And then in each movie... Uh, one brother buys a gift for the other brother. And uh, these are biological brothers buying a gift, like a birthday gift. And um, in both cases, one of them, it was uh, Michael Douglas and uh, Sean Penn. And it was the movie, The Game. And, and basically, it was a recreational entertainment program where it seemed to involve a lot of people acting out parts and checking out your all kinds of tests and what's going on in your consciousness. And then um, this game seems to come to you, reflecting your mind. And then the second one was The Man Who Knew Too Little uh, with Bill Murray. And uh, in the first one, Michael, Michael Douglas played a character who was a very powerful man of... of, of finances and controlling millions and millions of dollars, really tens of millions of dollars, and had a very strong investment in the self-concept and the ways of the world. And then the second one, which we're going to watch together today, uh, Bill Murray, uh, he he's not so invested in the world. As far as a career, I don't know if you could call it a career, he, he works with Blockbuster Video, Des Moines, Iowa. So he's uh, he's he's pretty loosened to the ways of the world, and it's a very similar setup. The value of this movie is that Jesus teaches us in the course: you will look upon that which you feel within, and everything that you experience with regard to this world is a projection of your mind and of your state of mind and consciousness. And both of them are undoing and dismantling the, the self-concept. But you might say uh, the reason we're watching the second movie today is because Bill Murray is, is much closer to what Jesus calls the happy learner. Jesus says in the Course, the Holy Spirit needs happy learners. And, and these happy learners have happy lessons that come on pretty quickly because... They're happy because there's not that investment in the world as, as a goal or as a searching for an outcome or trying to get things and get status and get something to prop up uh, the self-concept. Uh, so the Spirit uses our experiences in the world as mirroring the undoing process in the mind. So years ago also, I, I did a talk out at uh, the Living Miracles Monastery in, uh, out in the canyon here, not too far from here in Strawberry River Canyon. And, and I did a talk which later became called uh, Clueless, Carefree, and Cared For. And it was about the journey to God trusting being taken care of and and i don't know some a number of the people they just remembered that when when i 
that came out of my mouth, clueless, carefree, and cared for. And I, I really think of the, the, the Bill Murray character in the movie today is he's, he's pretty trusting. And the main point you'll see of this movie really is a, is a, a demonstration or a model for us to start to, to see that we can trust and we can be told, first we're told from Jesus that, uh, that the wor- world is just like a theater. And in this movie, uh, his brother buys him the gift of the theater of life. It's kind of an improv theater that comes to you. You know, you're the, you're the patron or the, uh, the client, and then you are in an interactive uh, improv theater where the characters all come to you. And that's his setup. So that's going to be his mindset. And imagine, you know, if, if you were seeing the characters where you work or the characters you live with or the characters that you interact with on a daily basis, imagine if you were seeing them as actors and actresses that were just playing out a part that was there to, to help you and to, uh, in some sense, um, entertain you, definitely keep your attention, we know, but also there was a deeper purpose for undoing and building trust. And you can only imagine the, the loosening in the mind when you s- ceased to take personal responsibility for the characters in the dream, having a mindset that it's like an interactive theater. Uh, It's just like this interactive theater that you are watching and participating in. And uh, it's also, uh, it's an act. So in one sense, there's this sense when you go to a stage play or you go to a live play on Broadway or you go to a movie, there's a certain calmness and receptivity that's there because the, the context you have is that you, you're just in a safe place, whether it's a theater or watching a Broadway show or whatever, and, and you are not, uh, you're not necessarily on the stage, although with interactive theater, uh, it can seem a bit like you're on the stage, but it's, it's, you don't have such an investment in thinking things are being done to you apart from your own uh, decision. In this case, Bill Murray feels like he's his brother, uh, who's played by Peter Gallagher. Basically, uh, he, Bill Murray's characters come to visit him, and him and his wife are involved in a lot of business dealings with a lot of diplomats, very busy. So in one sense, they're kind of... Uh, giving this gift uh, as a way to kind of uh, for Peter Gallagher to get his, his brother out of his hair for, so to speak, so he can uh, have some space to do his business dealings. But through uh, a mix up in a phone call, uh, Bill Murray will get drawn into uh, all kinds of things coming at him, which is what we have to face. We have to face that there's every day, there's all kinds of things coming at us from all different angles very unpredictable. Um, it can seem at times like you're at the mercy of the environment, at the mercy of the people that you live with, at the mercy of, of the relationships that seem to be right in front of you all the time. And yet, if you had a different perspective, if you were able to really train your mind to have that perspective that you're watching something that is mirroring your mind, but it's not, you're not actually in it or a part of it. It's more like uh, the world is in you, Jesus is teaching us, and you're learning to interact and watch your thoughts. We're told from Jesus that we never, we never interact with anything directly. We never really interact with the world directly. We're always reacting and responding emotionally based on our interpretations of what seems to be happening. So even though we're raised with the idea that people can upset us and there's situations that can upset us, there can be movies that are disturbing to us, 
There can be TV shows that are disturbing. Watching the news can be disturbing. It's not really the case. It's that we're choosing our interpretation in our mind based on our beliefs and thoughts, and then our emotions are based on those interpretations. So it makes sense that Jesus could work with us to help us change our interpretations to learn how to interpret the world with the Holy Spirit instead of trying to interpret the world with the ego. Typical human awareness is basically egoically reacting and responding to the world. Oh, I had a bad day. What happened? Well, I got caught in traffic and then I was late for work and then the boss yelled at me and then um, I had to work over lunchtime so I didn't get to eat lunch and I got tired in the afternoon. It's as if there's all these external events that may give us a bad day when in fact we're just through our self-concept, our thoughts and beliefs are disturbing us because we're caught up in ego false identity. And, and that is disturbing. If, you, if you're really the Christ, but you forget that, you have amnesia, you block that out of awareness, you forget about heaven, you forget about God, you forget about your eternal love and light that you truly are, and you come into a body identity in which you seem to be very interactive with the environment and the people around you, and you're so caught up into this theater uh, that you take it very seriously. And uh, when somebody cuts you off in traffic, instead of just slowing down and laughing and, and going, nice try, ego, you know, if you react with anger to getting cut off in traffic, then it's like you're identified with that, that person, that body, that character, and then you're reacting based on the past, based on this past belief that you're a person in the world. So I would say it takes, it takes quite a fair bit of mind training, and this is just giving you an example of when I was doing the course in the late 90s and then just letting the days be shown to me and unfolding. Uh, that's the kind of um, experience I would have through guidance, guidance to watch these movies. And then after the movies, you know, Jesus was basically saying, do you get it? You know, can you tell the difference between the first movie, which had the same kind of context where the main character was really reactive? I mean, he was so reactive in the first movie, the game, that I think uh, the Michael Douglas character found himself buried alive down in Mexico. He's spitting dirt trying to, to bust out of this uh, grave that he's been put in versus um, actually the light, kind of lighthearted experience uh, that, that Bill Murray went through. And I said, yeah, I can see a major contrast there. The contrast is basically Jesus said, one character is taking it pretty lightly because he sees it as like a play or a theater, and it's something he can learn from and grow from or go through this expansiveness with and keep the lightheartedness. And then the other character was showing the very beginnings of throes of dark ego attachment, which can get really traumatic and really dramatic and be extremely painful. So I was inspired by the, the defenselessness uh, that was exhibited in this movie. And this has been a movie they were reminding me at lunch that I've talked about. Uh, they were asking Eric if he'd seen it, and he said, oh, yeah, anybody who's been around David for the last 10 years has watched this movie for sure, because this one is part of our Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment. Actually, both movies I mentioned, The Game and The Man Who too, Knew Too Little, they're both part of our Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment because they're so helpful as instructive devices to uh, start to see what's going on in the mind and, and raise the, the unconscious up. And this is going to be a real collaborative effort this afternoon. We have Andy and Kenneth uh, standing by. And yeah, Andy and Kenneth, maybe uh, 
do you, you could share a little bit about what your feelings are about this movie because um i think it's been pretty impactful for m most everybody i know has has had had uh, found the helpfulness in this movie uh, because it can be kind of abstract talking about undoing the self-concept. What does that mean for most people in the world? They're like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? This this gives it a context, but maybe we can take it down to our Mexico studio and, and hear what, what you guys have to say uh, leading into this fantastic movie. Uh, thank you, David. Um, yeah, this movie really, really touched me. I... I only watched it probably about a year ago. And um, it was like one of those movies that when it gets mentioned, I knew that I had to watch it. And I knew that it was going to be very important for me. And so I was excited about that time. And I actually did um, what you did. We watched it at Quantico together with the game and then The Man Who Knew Too Little for the very first time. I hadn't seen either of them. And yeah, as you, as you said, the first one is there's, the, there's this defensiveness and the world is seemingly against him and he's in this game and he's taken it all seriously. And so I could relate with that. And you sort of go on this, um, go in this turmoil really with him and like, oh God, that is absolutely terrible. And then finally, you know, he sort of pops through it, but in a very difficult way. And then the next day we watch... Um, this movie, The Man Who Knew Too Little. And for me, it was like a, a prayer, and it stays with me, this movie, because I sort of like hold it in my pocket um, when them times when I'm getting too serious about this pathway or what it seemingly um, means. And I feel like Jesus gave me this gift, and he said, it was, it was like, you know, it's like as if Hollywood made this movie for me. That's how it feels. He's like watch this because I would sort of say God I'm so defensive How, I don't know what you mean you know um, in my defenselessness my safety lies it just that lesson I really love that lesson but it felt so alien to me it's like how do you do that in this world I mean it just seems like I, I don't I don't understand that and so um, this movie gave me the image of it and it was like, oh, my God, I just every time I watched it, the first time I watched it, I was just like, that is it. This is amazing. And just how he just goes through everything. It's, you know, the theatre of life. It's just a theatre. It's just a play. Don't take things so seriously. It like reminds me of um, uh, Bill Thetford's book. It was it. Don't don't forget to laugh or. <laughs> and, and, and this movie is, <laughs> is, just, is just exactly that. And yeah, for me, I think we can get pretty serious on, on this journey. And Bill Murray just, as you said, David, just plays this part so perfectly, you know. He's completely and utterly fully in it, but he's not taking it so serious. He's not taking it seriously. And, um, you know, the prayer that you just said to us, um, David, um, for, for, for next year is, Holy Spirit, help me overlook the error. It's like no matter what comes to him, he's just completely overlooking the error. And it's like, you know, we're, we can sort of like see it from our perspective. It's like, OK, he's got himself into this mischief and this is like seemingly pretty serious stuff. But because he doesn't believe in it, he's just completely and utterly overlooking all of these errors. And everything is actually coming now towards him and actually supporting him in that. So all the support continuously <laughs> rushes in. But he thinks he's in a game you know and there's just a beautiful part when one of the ladies is sort of getting all, getting all serious because she obviously believes she's in the drama and he says don't forget it's only the theater of life and she and she thinks it's some sort of philosophy philosophy thing that he's saying he go, she goes yeah yeah you're right you know and it's like just don't take it so seriously so for me to be sharing this with everybody today it just feels such a gift in my heart and it's like whenever I whenever I get too serious, I make sure I put this on and it just light, lightens the whole load. So if you haven't seen this, I'm just so excited for you and I'm so excited for me. <laughs> and, uh, what about you, Andy? Yeah, yeah, it reminds me, it's like that dreamer, the dream mindset. But what I that you were talking about, 
Um, but I, what I really liked about it too is that lightheartedness. Like I feel like it's like the state of mind, like this mindset. It's almost like, you know, David, you use that analogy of a movie theater a lot, and I always really love that. Um, just kind of observing, like being a witness, and I feel like that movie, this movie, is like a demonstration. Like he's just walking with. Jesus and just seeing everything with Jesus and it's almost like Jesus is kind of always there in our lives like no matter what seems to be happening he's always kind of like laughing about it you know it's like he's just kind of like laughing and there'll be like these jokes and like Jesus jokes and yeah I feel like it is a reminder like don't take things so seriously and Jesus is just always there like laughing and really like lighthearted about it and just this demonstration and attitude and that that's what feels really good to me about this. Oh, uh-huh. uh, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Well, that's that's a great setup for uh, this whole thing. I think too one of the the interesting things is is that when you go on the spiritual journey, uh, Jesus says, you know, your your forehead is more serene. You you smile more frequently, uh, but but those around you will. Will, will sometimes just see you as you were, like, and because they're looking through the filter of the past, and that's pretty evident in this movie too, because um, he's Bill Murray's character is so lighthearted, and he's just like walking through it uh, in the context of it's just theater. So he's like he he's in a playful state of mind with whatever's happening to him, and yet. To the ones that are around him, you know, they actually think that it's sometimes they'll think, my God, this guy is fearless. They think he's like a soup, some super spy. It's just, he's just a simple guy who's visiting from the United States and uh, visiting England. And he's, uh, you know, worked, has his job at Blockbuster Video in Des Moines, Iowa. And, and yet he, he is so playful with everything that to others, he appears to be fearless or some kind of a, a, an American super spy. Uh, and I think you'll see what happens when they uh, actually, they, they believe he's a spy and they actually uh, give him a shot, give, give him some truth serum uh, to really get him to tell the truth of what's going on. And to me, that's, that's amazing. We, we demonstrate that we're following God mostly by our attitude. You know, the words can change a little bit as you go along, but mostly it's your relaxed attitude, your lightness, your playfulness, your spontaneity that really shows people like, okay, things are working working for you. I, they may not understand what's happening as you go through this transformation of consciousness, and most of the characters in this movie do not understand uh, his brother, uh, his brother's wife, and and then a lot of the characters cannot understand um, why uh, he is so lighthearted and fearless. But but actually, uh, a non-judgment, uh, the playfulness of of seeing it as a dream or a play, uh, really brings you into a state where where you don't take the world seriously. And that's really what Jesus wants us to do. He says that. Uh, the main problem was was remembering not to laugh at this tiny mad idea. So the more you loosen from the ego, the more funny everything gets, and you don't don't take the world so seriously because you see that it's just a bunch of effects based on the cause in your mind. And when you don't don't take the ego serious, and you can line up with the spirit, then you do see the world in the same way, in a very lighthearted way. So. So we will uh, we'll roll the movie here, and um, maybe you may hear some commentary here or there. If, if uh, Andy and Kenneth ha- have anything that's just really coming to them at, at, or myself, we will uh, we'll pause and, and interject our thoughts and, and experiences there, and then we'll have, a, a, I'm sure, a very lively, uh, interactive discussion at the end of the movie. So... Enjoy your uh, Christmas movie, The Man Who Knew Too Little. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> just as fresh this time around. Well, we'll just give you um, 
I'll give you some brief comments from up here and we'll turn it down to Mexico for some comments and experiences there. You know, for me, everything about spirituality has to be practical. And so this isn't really about glossing over anything, but what Jesus is saying is that, that you know, you, when your mind is, is a attached to the past, and when you are addicted to the past, which is the ego, then you perceive the consequences of that belief. So Jesus is not trying to deny that there are things that seem pretty dark in this world. He's not trying, he one point says denial of the body is the inappropriate use of denial. And then he explains himself that the body is part of how you perceive yourself. So if you deny the body, you actually are getting into denying the power of the mind because he's saying you made this up. So, so you, can't, you can't dispel or you can't put down the power of the mind and hope to escape from this world. You have to realize the power of the mind. And then he's saying that everything you perceive are the effects of the ego. So clearly in this world, one body can seem to hurt another body. Uh, Bodies seem to get sick. Bodies seem to die. Jesus isn't denying any of that. But what he is doing is he's making an appeal to the mind. And he's saying, you believe in this world. It's, it's egoic, you made it up from this belief in separation, but the world that you perceive is only the effects of this ego belief. And until you can overlook the ego truly in your mind, then you still will feel like you're at the mercy of a world outside of yourself. So it seems like a very hostile, volatile, dangerous world, but it's just the effect of what you believe. And so we have to dispel the belief in it for it to turn happy, for it to turn into the forgiven world, and then as you forgive it, then you'll be closer and closer to letting it go and waking up to reality. So I really like this movie because... um, He seems to, because of the phone booth and the switch in the beginning, he seems to, uh, the Bill Murray character, he actually finds himself caught up in in espionage and spies and uh, trying to bring back the Cold War and all kinds of political things, which is basically a good synopsis of what the world is. But because he sees it, he's been told it's the theater of life, because he has that suggestion in his mind, because he's been told that it's just acting, then he plays off of that cue all the way through. And he pretty much is carried all the way through uh, the whole thing without really taking it so seriously. And I, for me, every time, like uh, Kenneth was saying, when, when you watch this movie, it is just a, such a strong reminder that this world is a world of effects and that it is very much like a theater. And to the extent that you get engaged in it and take it on as real, then you, know, you suffer the consequences, and not in truth, but in awareness. And to the extent you use it as a reminder to remind yourself not take any of it seriously. Don't, don't let it depress you. Don't let it frustrate you. Don't let it bring you down emotionally because only you giving it the power to do that is what makes that happen in awareness. And if you stop doing that, then you, you don't suffer. You know, you, you can, I mean, I even tried it out as I did the mind training. I would go to amusement parks, and when I was a kid, I was afraid to go on roller coaster rides or anything that 
flip the body around or upside down, I ended up with the mind training being able to go on on all kinds of rides at uh, Cedar Point up up uh, the northern Ohio. I had experiences in uh, these uh, major kind of uh, theaters um, where they, uh, I think they're called IMAX theaters, where they basically, a lot of people around me were grabbing for the post or falling on the floor because of the like three, three story high uh, visuals. And I remember just being there and just watching the screen while everybody was falling around, grabbing, grabbing onto things. Uh, I was just kind of there like, Oh my gosh, I'm not affected by the the theater. I'm not I'm out here I'm an IMAX theater and I'm still not affected by by these images. So I actually started to have these kind of things happen to me to show me the 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 you might say the benefits of the mind training where you work on your mind not like in a hypnotic way but in a, a very deep way of clearing away the the thoughts and the beliefs and and cleaning up the interpretations. And, you know, if you would go to a movie that some people would say are horror movies or whatever, uh, you know, I would go to those kind of movies just to check it out. Uh, and it, for me, it was just very peaceful through the whole movie, but it was like, wow, I'm just not interpreting the, the what they call the spooky uh, soundtrack and the spooky noises and the, the, the faces with all kinds of, you know, distortions, they try to make them up for horror movies. You know, you just, you just don't interpret it in the same way and you don't feel those emotions anymore. So for me, I, again, I'm so grateful to have watched this movie with you all because uh, it just, it shows what some of you have been writing in. I know um, Esther, you were writing in at the very beginning about um, trying to to really loosen yourself from thinking things are real and wanting an experience of that, wanting to go deeper into the experience. And it really relates to everything that I've been talking about today and everything that, that Kenneth and Andy were talking about last night. Because uh, this is... This is truly a way that it can free your mind, but you really have to keep at it. You really have to keep practicing it because the mesmerism that Mary Baker Eddy talked about, the, the belief in this world, kind of a hypnotic trance, uh, it's, it's a very thick fog. And in order to rise up into the light and, and come into that place of forgiveness and non-judgment, then you really need to, to uh, keep at it. So I want to turn it down to uh, to Mexico to see how it was for for Andy and Kenneth. How how was that for you guys? <laughs> around. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it you just reminded me actually that um, the first time I watched it, and it's just come back to me. The other time I had this deep prayer of um, really wanting to see um, projection makes perception. And that was so strong in my mind. And then when I watched this movie, I just thought, yes, this is it. Whatever I project out, I'm going to perceive in my, in my own mind. And Spencer, I then thought, I'm going to use Spencer. Spencer is my teacher because he's not taking these projections so seriously. They're coming at him and he's looking at them. And, you know, I was just thinking about the time when he gets shouted at in the air. He's sort of like, time out, you know, it's like he, he's had that reaction. But then, he, but, then he, but then he says to him, you know, it's not nice to shout in someone's ear that close. He's, he, he's just continuously forgiving and let go of, it, go of it because it's not real. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the truth. And then he wants to just move into the next scene. And I think what you were sharing, David, it's like so easy to get caught up in the projection when it really comes like in that thickness of like, there's something happening to me in the world. It seems so real. And I've got to try and clear this fog from my mind. And um, it's like, no, it's the projection 
makes perception. I'm, I'm generating this, but it feels so real. It feels like it's outside of me. And I think, you know, now we've got sort of like Spencer and we say, no, what would Spencer do in this, in this, in this situation? You, like just you, you, use him um, as, a, a, as our guide. And Spencer is not taking it seriously. Um, yes, it is, a, it is a projection. And it's really, really not the truth of who we are. I want to see it and I want to let it go. And I want to move on to my next scene in the theatre of life. And um, that's what he just does beautifully. He continuously moves through every scene in that way, um, dispelling all his projections. And I just thought the other thing that you shared, David, was about, you know, in a way, it's like like in the beliefs. And I thought um, my sort of imagination went to, oh, it was like, it's like the Holy Spirit almost gave him this sort of three hours or whatever it was and said, hey, I want to give you this experience, um, Wally, of letting go of all of your beliefs that you think of the world. And this will actually show you um, some truth about who you are. And so he had this period of time whereby he was able to let go of these beliefs because he wasn't taking it so seriously. And then it, it became more and more joyful. He's like, wow, this is so joyful because I'm not taking it so seriously. And then he's just becoming happier and happier. And, you know, when, it's like when his brother comes along, he says, oh, this is a hoot, you know. And it's like he's almost just been killed. He oh, asks, this is a hoot, this is, I think you're going to like this. And it's just that he's dispelling all the ideas that he has in, in, in his own mind. So it's just the thing that came to me. And I, it was, oh, what's the, um, he was in the world, but not of the world. So yeah, that's what that's what I took from it. So thank you, Spencer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, it's like it's really that interpretation. Like I really like the the cluelessness and like the I don't know. It's like I don't know actually how to look upon this. Um, I it's like from self for self concept. Um, I do not know the thing I am. I do not know what I'm doing, who I am, or how to look upon the world or on myself. I feel like that's really important for me. It's like there can be such a harsh interpretation in the mind when we think we know something or we we make these conclusions based on some kind of past um, beliefs or associations. And I feel like just that cluelessness was so helpful for me it's like I don't know it's like I don't know how to look upon this I don't know who my brother is I don't know who I am or how to look upon the world or on myself it's like this complete state of cluelessness like um Mr. Magoo I don't even know who that is but I just know he's like really clueless (laughs) Mr. Magoo these movies like being there and the movie we saw this afternoon, like I just love that state of cluelessness. Like I don't know, I don't know how to look upon this. You show me. It's like give me a new interpretation of how to look upon this. But really starting with that, I don't know mind. Like I I just don't know how to look on this. And then and then from there it's just this openness and then you just get guided from there. But I really like that openness. I don't know. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Andy. And kind of, you know, it's, I think too, you know, it's beautiful because we, we can give a little bit of a sense that, that it it just takes a dedication and a devotion with mind training. Because as as you were both talking, I was like thinking, yeah, it's like, when did this start to kick in? Because I remember the course came into my life in the parable of David in 1986. And then about a decade later um, was when I started to uh, maybe a decade, a little bit shorter than a decade, I started to practice living in Course in Miracles communities where we were really dedicated. Uh, right about that time, about a decade later, uh, nine years or so after that first exposure to the Course, I was living in a, a spiritual community in Denver, and we were watching movies and praying, meditating, practicing like every day in a full-on like a, it was kind of like an incubator or a, a being in like in an embryo of mind training because we, everybody there was so, like in our community, so full on into the mind training that, that we were kind of blessed in spiritual community. I never even planned or expected to be in anything like that, but it just kind of 
came up again and was guided. And so I was able to, to talk about it openly, all my emotions. And, and we really got into, that's when we were getting into the expression sessions pretty good. And then about maybe a little bit less than a decade later, uh, around 2003, going to, to, uh, to Argentina, I, I really had not been outside of the United States and Canada. So going to Argentina, where they speak Spanish, and, and uh, you know, going to cultures, Jesus was like taking me out to, into cultures where I didn't know the language, I didn't really know much about the culture, the history, and anything. I kind of can relate to that uh, man who knew too little, because I was just showing up to be used to talk about A Course in Miracles, but I needed a lot of translators. I needed people to help me, places to stay and donate some money so I could move about and taxi rides and all kinds of logistical things that you have to deal with in the world as a human being. But they all just came. It, it was like a fairy tale. I would just show up and say, okay, Jesus, Holy Spirit, you use me. And then everything that I seemed to need what came to me in a very joyful way, like... Uh, like with Spencer there, uh, uh, I was just floating around like being carried like a twig in the river. And at times I would have to like pinch myself like saying, this is so surreal for a, for a shy, quiet guy. And then now all of a sudden I'm off in countries where I don't even speak the language, sharing whatever the spirit would speak through me and watching everything get orchestrated around me. And of course, that was just the beginning of the world travels in, in 2003. So as that continued on year after year, actually now that's, what is that, about 16 years ago, um, going on 17 years, I'm just giving you little snapshots about how when you give yourself over to the healing and the mind training, then it may seem to take some time. I think it's a speed up now, so I, I feel like... It's so beautiful listening uh, to you, Kenneth and, and Andy, because you've kind of splashed down into this concentrated mind training program where you really focus on it, you know, 24 uh, seven with all the emotions that you go through and everything like that. But I think that's important because maybe you see we're being very transparent. We're just, the spirit's flowing through. We can share a lot of parables, a lot of things that we're going through day to day. And, and I, I heard last night how valuable that is. And for me, that's, that's like an, a little snapshot or a little glimpse of how important it is to just give your heart over to this and really let the spirit cleanse your mind, like purify your heart. Because, until you wash away this unconscious guilt and until you really are able to release those attack thoughts and grievances and judgments, until you can like tap in and really get linked in there with the guidance that, that takes you, you know, through time and space, then uh, it, it takes you through the labyrinth. It takes you through the maze and one step at a time you're guided you might say, to a state of mind that's transcendent, that's beyond that. And, I, and again, I, I remember one of the questions that just came in, um, I think it was towards, towards the end here, there was, there was questions about the yeses and the noes. I think, um, yeah, Portia was asking uh, how, how that relates, uh, the private thoughts with the... Uh, with, um, the actually, how do you how do you go through life without without correcting the error, without correcting other people, and how does that relate uh, to what we've been talking about earlier? Uh, that's less confronted, but it actually takes a lot of mind training before it seems like you're just watching the world. And I think there was one other person who had written in too about the private thoughts and. How do the private thoughts relate to the yeses and nos? And I know I can just say the short version of that answer is it's just guidance. If, if you start to think about let your yes be yes, let your no be no, let yourself be 
guided in an uncompromising way, it's not like yes is better than no. It's more like if you're in a labyrinth or a maze and you come to all these little junctures where you seem in the, in the dream world or in the matrix, you seem to have to go left or right in a maze to go out and through the maze or through the labyrinth. You have to make a lot of seeming choices at those points of decision. That's just all guidance. When you give yourself over to the Spirit and you just say, take me, lead me, guide me, you'll be guided exactly where to go, what to say, what to do. You get more intuitive about that. And then you reach a point where you realize you don't have to decide anymore. Like, you realize that all those points of decision that were taking you out of the matrix are all just given. They're all just prearranged. It's all just a big prearranged plan. You think you're, you're moving through it while you still believe you're in it. And then once you have these transcendent and these really deep mystical experiences, you start to realize it was, it was all, all for the escape. It was all for the forgiven world. It was all for the happy dream. None of it made any sense. You could never even piece it together like a puzzle. You could never figure out all the moves that you had to make, but you just were so willing to make the moves, you know, to follow your heart, to follow that intuition, and then it takes you to a state of mind. So I love the inspiration of this. I'm just, I, I see Bill Murray, you know, just the funny looks on his face and dancing the Russian dance, you know, I mean, he is, he is like demonstrating it's okay to let it look however it looks and be spontaneous. And it actually can be quite funny instead of such a serious thing of thinking, I've, I've got a serious problem here and I have to figure it out. You don't really have to figure it out, but you do have to, to be guided. So, wow, <laughs> it's pretty strong, a pretty strong movie for that. Well, we've got... Uh, I'm up here, and we've got Kenneth and Andy, and why don't we open it up? Any kind of uh, experience you had with the movie, any kind of reactions, any insights or miracles you had during the movie that relates to your own experience, or questions that you have, uh, you can just um, raise your hand or let uh, Nicholas know in some way, and then, uh, yeah, I'm here at the studio in Utah, and, and Andy and Kenneth are down there, so we're all, we're at your service. For the next 42 minutes, <laughs> we're here to, to join with you and try to help, you know, make things clear, give you examples or, or meet you, whatever, whatever you feel uh, you need or you have any questions. We would love to be here to address those. Oh, thank you, David. We have Hazel and uh, John have their hand up. Go ahead. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. So um, I'm grateful to, um, I've got two, two machines going here. I'll just try and turn one off so there's no feedback. Uh, sorry about that. Anyways, um, I'll just put it under the cushion. Hopefully that'll help. Anyways, um, I just wanted to thank you. This is John's first time. He's joined us uh, for the uh, Hi. session. Hi, and uh, I just, I just want to say um, I've really been processing. I processed so heavily and um, just very grateful for the, the support that came through. And I have, uh, before every retreat, I just go deep. Just, I just go in so deeply and, you know, all this stuff that comes up the support through the retreat it's just like I've lived it it feels like I've been turned inside out and um, um, and then you know by Sunday and Monday it, you know I feel this incredible bliss and then I look and then it just it gradually starts to rebuild again and um, just before the um, the movie started I I just <clears throat> shot off a quick email to you David saying you know help <laughs> I'm just so um, deeply entrenched in the illusion, the uh, illusions of the ego, and um, like 
you know, what is, what's my next step? I've been, t you know, studying the course for a couple of years and I've been doing these online retreats now since July. And I just kind of want to unravel the, the ego. And I don't know what the difference is between the mystical mind training or whether to do a devotional stay, but I just want to be, I just want to be rid of the ego and I want to be just ripped open to to be in the in the bliss and in 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 the divine um place of of, of inspiration and service and guidance and just I, I yearn for that because my life just feels so empty thank you thank you helen well i can speak to a couple of those things uh, the mystical mind training program you mentioned and also the devotional stays I would say that like if, if we related it to back when we were in high school and, you know, we'd, we'd take a chemistry class where, where we have, we're supposed to study the text, you know, for three or four or five days before we go into the lab, uh, you know, and actually then we go into the lab to actually try it out, to do the experiments. And one of us is more of a prep, like the, the, the reading of the, the science book, the chemistry book, whatever we were using is our prep. With The Course in Miracles, obviously the text is, is a very helpful prep and the workbook is the practical application. The mystical mind training program was built to take very deep ideas and very deep topics and bring them through in an experiential way. So it's very audio visual. It's got prayers and meditations and exercises. It's got movie clips uh, from, from very famous uh, metaphysical movies and all kinds of movies um, that, that are specifically designed to help you pop through certain uh, blocks, blocks and, and, uh, and conflicts. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes people have a problem in the, with the Course where Jesus says, well, one of the most difficult uh, ideas to grasp is the idea of true empathy, um, which is really about staying with what's real and true when most all of us as human beings are used to people-pleasing and, and always reacting to other people and trying to live our lives according to please others and so forth. So we've got some major difficulties with uh, true empathy, for example, uh, or holy relationship. Um, like Kenneth was saying earlier, you know, he found when he first watched the movie that it was like a, 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 an outpicturing or an image the movie was to help him start to really grasp this idea of projection. And that's saying something because uh, Kenneth, Kenneth uh, he can tell you his... Uh, his profession, he was a psychotherapist, and psychotherapists, more so than most anyone, have, have a little bit better idea of projection. But, but the idea that the whole world is a projection, not just husbands and wives projecting onto each other and parents and children, but the, the whole world is a projection of mind, he was having trouble really experiencing that, and then he, he watched... Uh, the movie, and then he felt that. He, he talked about that twice there before, before the movie and, and after. So the mystical mind training program is more of a, it's meant to be done maybe over two years, but it's got a lot of modules that take major themes from A Course in Miracles and bring in a lot of examples, movie clips, uh, exercises, meditation, music. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, where you're, you read a fairy tale in, in a book when you're a kid growing up, and then you go to your first Disney movie, Walt Disney movie, and whoa, on the big screen with the, the colors and the, the soundtrack and everything, you just go, wow. You know, you, I, I was just blown away watching Disney movies uh, growing up, Pocahontas and Lion King, and a lot of them have been very touching for me. And then the devotional stay is actually more of a practicum where, where you go and you stay at one of the centers when you're surrounded with a group of very dedicated uh, brothers and sisters who, who pretty much left, they have all these great skills and abilities, but they've left up 
channeling them to, in a profession to try to earn a lot of money, uh, retire with a good nest egg, and uh, you know, get the gold watch and all the typical things that, that we're trained to do in terms of society. It's more like you're with people who pray together, who have expression sessions, who talk, who work with collaborative projects where it takes a lot of prayer and communication to be very intuitive. So it's almost like the devotional stay is, I would say, it's like the practicum uh, where you get right in the lab and and when you're going through the the intensities, then people can be there to support you because everybody shares the same purpose. Everybody's there to forgive and and to wake up. They're not there to to harbor grievances. They're not there to have agendas. They're they're not there to uh, to try to control. They're actually there to forgive, and they've, they've put their whole hearts into that. Um, recently, I was just in Brazil, and the friend, one of the friends who was hosting me, uh, she, she said, it's, I love all these tools in the world, and she had just been to a Byron Katie uh, event out in California, and she said, yeah, well, Byron, she is just, she is just, amazingly spectacular but she said a lot of the assistants were there too and and she said they were all very helpful but she said when I've come to devotional stays at your community I just have to look into the eyes of the people and there's something really deep there like there this is not an event this is like a 24 7 dedicated life and and then the wisdom that comes through maybe it's an example like oh yeah, I, I faced that in my life, and when I was when I was very intense and this and that, they actually parables of that are very helpful come through uh, when they're when you're joining with them because they've lived it. You know, they've some of them have lived this for for some years. Uh, this isn't like a new thing that the newness has worn off, and now they're getting into the the rhythm of that deep devotional practice that we think about with the Essenes maybe or Mother Teresa or and her nuns or the, the Franciscans uh, you know it's like a really getting in that tractor beam of devotion for God the ones that have kind of made the turn and they actually have undone a lot of things they're not trying to bring the truth into the illusion they're not trying to bring the course into business or the course you know into society they're actually seeing that business, society, all the desires of the ego, those have to be faced head on with the light, with the Holy Spirit and Jesus in the mind. So that maybe can give you a little bit of a context of how these things work together. Um, it's kind of usually a step-by-step. -step. I think for a lot of people, they, they do the online retreats and maybe they, they work their way in and really give themselves a chance to be immersed in MMT to really start to, to gain a, a clear perspective on some of these deep ideas. So there's not just words, you know, so they actually have a, a real clear experience of, of what that means, whatever the topic. And then once they come into devotional stay, um, yeah, that there's a lot of support there, but also some some resistances come up that they were even surprised that they had. You know, they thought, oh, I'll just go and it'll be a happy experience. And sometimes they get there and then they're in the middle of the devotional stay and then the, some pretty strong resistance kicks in. And But there's support, you know, they, okay, talk about it, share your feelings, don't, don't hide it. So uh, I hope that gives you you and everybody, just a little bit of a context for those things that you mentioned. Thank you, Helen. Nice to meet you, John. Glad you could join in. Okay, we have uh, Francois with his hand up. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Mm. Hi, David. Hi, everyone. Friends, very, very happy to meet you, meet you all. To my first retreat and very touched. It's a it's a wonderful experience. Um, as I was looking at the film, I have a kind of a aha moment. Uh, 
uh, a, a few times. It, it, it developed along the way when I realized that Wallace, who was playing Spencer, in a way, he was the only one not really involved in a role, in a way. There was, you know, uh, his brother, uh, everyone, uh, I mean, every agent, every in a way, they were involved in the role. Him, because of the nature of, 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 of his experience, he was actually not bound with time. What I realized, and, and the parallel that I did with my own experience, is that I'm involved with my professional life. You know, I'm a, I'm a consultant. I, I'm working with organizations at defining their uh, learning and development strategies uh, at complete corporate level. And, and um, I realized up to now how much I was involved into living the course through my consultation and seeing the, the sacredness of what I was doing. But, but the shock of seeing this film where there was no compromise at all from the, for, for Wallace, there was, there was no special time. Every act, every scene were the same, were the same, uh, at the same level. I mean, the, the same flavor. It's, it was the kind of the parallel with the holy instant uh, mm -hmm. and not the specialness of the time or the event or it. Everything was the um, being aware that s there was this act going on. So in a way, it was like stretching as, as, as the holy instant probably can be encompassing. So it was really interesting. And, and, and I, my question coming to that is this question of uh, the, linked to this realization in, in, in a way of non-investment in the character of uh, making a deal of the, the specialness of, let's say, let's say my job. Or, mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I mean, I, that's what I will stay with, the, the question of looking at... Um, Everything from that perspective of everything, every moment, ju just the awareness of of whatever with whomever, which is inc encompassing, you know, <laughs> everyone and everything, no specialness. Yeah. So, so thank you so much. Uh, so, so, I'd like to hear you about th this. I mean, non-investment in a way, non-investment in the world. That's basic. That's basically how I, I got that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. In, with A Course in Miracles, we're told this course is, is not difficult, but it is very different. And that's good to know. You know, it's, it's, it's very different. The direction we're being guided is very different. We have to know that from the beginning. Because um, when I started to really listen to spirit and, and hear instructions and give myself over, that's what I noticed right away, too. I was like, wow, I've played all these different roles. And I was starting to get into this, like, not knowing uh, this clueless and, and carefree state of mind. It felt very expansive. And yet um, I started to see that the joy in, in not being in a role and not being in time was where the continuity was. It, it wasn't like in... You know how they say, oh, work for 40, 50, 60 years and you get a gold watch or you get your reward at the end. I was finding in the moment that was the joy of not knowing. And then it was a bit, um, it was a bit like you're used to breathing air and then all of a sudden you're breathing water or something. I mean, you know, it was like a shock to the lungs. It was to my mind. It was, I, I loved it. I said, this feels fantastic, but it's so different. So... For example, I enjoyed music, I enjoyed movies. The spirit will work with the things that we even prefer. In an egoic sense, the spirit can say, I can use that too. So I remember going to movies and, and getting these huge downloads where during the movie and especially after the movie, it was like used as a processing where I was stuck or where I was still invested. And Jesus was saying, oh, did you notice that? Did you notice how you got really tense 
at this scene and over here. And it was so practical that it, it was so helpful too. I thought of movies were just entertainment, you know, so, you know, I worked my job, work in my career, earn my money, pay my bills. And then over here was my entertainment. The music and the movies were the entertainment. And Jesus said, well, actually I can, I can use those to help you loosen from being so serious about all of these roles because the ego made up the roles and they all involve some limits. Like you noticed in the movie, everyone who was acting in a role had very intense emotions, whether there was the, the butcher who was frustrated trying to kill him, whether it was the diplomats, whether it was his, his brother who was Finch and the bank and trying to play the banker role, the wife, his wife was really confused. Who is this guy? And, uh, oh, that's your brother. Oh, and, oh, he could st come and be with us. And no, that's not a good idea. Not, he, don't mix my Wally... Wallace, don't mix Wallace with business. That, he said that because don't don't mix that spontaneity and joy and playfulness with business. They they really don't go well together. One's based on reciprocity, uh, lack and loss and gain, and and productivity and everything. And spontaneity is like a, a child play. It's it's so free. So I'm I'm so glad that you noticed all that because. That's exactly the way it goes. I will say that the spirit is so gentle, though, that for most people, their mind is, is gently unwound. You know, it would be like going to a swimming pool if it was freezing cold, and Jesus is not going to tell you to dive off the di high diving board and into the deep end. He'll have you switch those little toes around and maybe even go in the children's pool where it's a little warmer and swish around in there for half an hour before you even dangle your feet in the big pool. So spirit, you know, that's why I say be patient, be, be lighthearted with it, and, and don't uh, tell people, don't take your spirituality too serious because the ego can really throw a trip in there if it gets too serious, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Francois. That's beautiful. Thank you for your insights. Okay, we have Anna with her hand up. Go ahead, Anna. Hi, hello everyone. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for, for yesterday, for this morning, for this session. Um, my daughter joined me for the movie session and that's been a to have her with me. Um, I'm in an in-between process, um, having spent some time with you in, in Holland and then um, the devotional stay in Mallorca and then coming here to fix things up so that I can move on um, into community life for a longer period. I think it's incredible how um, when I first came, everything was just so simple and as time goes by, then little things started to, to come up and, and what I could see as, as um, stones on, on, on the way. And yesterday when Greg was saying, like, go for it. Don't, I mean, it will be provided. It will, it will happen. Just don't pay attention to those um, apparent obstacles. Because the joy is in there, the happiness, the, the excitement, it's all there. And then the distractions. God, those distractions, they just pop up like, like um, ghosts and, 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 and get your attention out of, of the real purpose. And seeing this film today and, and, and listening to you in the morning, it's just like, yes, just be above the battleground. Right? You, you don't have to take it seriously, just the... I love you instead of trying to change something or to trying to tell someone what to do. It all makes sense. It's just keep practicing and keep practicing. But without these um, reminders, without this connection, I mean, the ego just pop, <laughs> shows up and starts putting its strings and, and trying to get you trapped into that um, spider web with, with, 
which <clears> makes no sense. But yeah, I just wanted to say how grateful I am, how, how happy to, to have been reminded of the real purpose of what it's all about. And just to keep trusting and opening your heart and knowing that everything is all right. And, 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 and I'll be there in January with you. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you, Anna. Thank you. And we're, we're moving uh, more and more into digital. Like we've been loving these online retreats and we still have our centers and some touring going on. Kirsten's over in Europe and we have some touring planned around the movie. But, but I feel like uh, there's, Jesus has really put it on our heart to, to really reach and extend digitally to do these kind of gatherings with Latin America, with, uh, with uh, Mexico and Peru and all through uh, South America, um, the Spanish, the Latin America part. We were also in Brazil and the, they were so open hearted and people did, who hardly ever didn't even hear of the course, but had such sincerity and eagerness were just popping open and I was giving him the full course download in uh, over the weekend. So instead of studying it for 20 years, I'll, okay, let, I'll give you the, the key points. And then they have more questions and more I'd share. They more hungry than ever, uh, really expanding during the retreat, just the glow in their eyes. It was, it's, it happens very fast, but we're really grateful that you're coming uh, to Mexico and, that you'll be a part of that kind of expansion and expansion uh, digitally because we have, people are just really hungry. They're really hungry for it and they, they, they like to hear witness, see witnesses and that it's even possible. Uh, I see one of the, one of them uh, is on our, Daniela is on from uh, Columbia. I've seen her face smiling and she's another one who's going to be joining in uh, coming up to the retreat uh, in January and, and joining in with us digitally. And so to me, just seeing you give your heart over and having been on the online retreats and come to Mallorca and then with some of the younger ones coming that, that really are so sincere about really going for this. And, and they know there's plenty of obstacles, but they're all internal obstacles really, uh, so you're just, uh, in that way, you're helping to be a way shower uh, for many people from uh, South America. So, yeah, thank you. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Anna. Beautiful. Okay, we have uh, Mariana with her hand up. Go ahead, Mariana. Yes. Um, I just wanted to share the experience that I had right before the movie. Um, I popped over to the store with my partner and um, the little Russian doll that was on the movie. It was right by the cash register and I had never seen one before. I didn't know what it was. I'm like, wow, look at this doll. What is it? I've never seen it. He starts playing with it, unraveling it. It's like, it's a Russian doll. You've never seen it. I'm like, no, I've never seen it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then when the movie started, it's like the first thing, it's like the Russian doll being put together. And I just thought it was like, is, is that Jesus just sort of like messing with me or something? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny because I was like, wow, I've never seen that before. And then pops up in the movie. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Well, thank you. That's good. That, that's how you know you're, you're held by the spirit. Like the spirit's like, that's the symbols. I'm right here with you. I'm so close with you. It's like I had that happen. It happens every day for me. So I get so many of those kind of symbols. But I mentioned earlier when I was trying to fly to Reno and the plane couldn't land, so we went to Sacramento. We, we got our roller bags. We left the airport, hopped in a, a got a, 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 a rental car. But as we're doing all this, I still, my head turned to the right, and there was this big, bright yellow plane. I just don't see bright yellow planes. And then Spirit in big black letters. And both Jeffrey and I were just like high-fiving it like, yeah, oh, yeah, we're, we're to be on the road now. We didn't, we didn't plan to be, but, but we were just, you know, intuitively led there. And then we get the big sign 
the big spirit as the air, airplane is getting ready to taxi out. It, we could see it and we just left. But those are very helpful along the way because they're little reminders and reassurances that the spirit, I'm right there with you. And then you go right into a movie and from the opening scenes, you know, all the way through, you know, the Russian dolls. So thank you for sharing that. And thanks for your time, yeah, in Mexico. That was beautiful. I know uh, you, you're one who just, both you and Anna have gone through uh, devotional stays. So, you know, it's like a rich time and it, it does take almost time to process uh, that because sometimes you can have a, go through resistances and things with it. Or when you come back to Texas and, and, and Anna coming back to Peru, then, you go through the day and these uh, distractions can just pop up and uh, it's quite a trip uh, once you start to, to give yourself over to spirit because the ego is like saying, not so fast, what about this roadblock, what about this? And yeah, it's, it's really uh, cool that you're, you're hanging in there with it all. So thank you. Okay, we have Jason with his hand up. Go ahead, Jason. Hi, thank you. Um, David, I just want to say thank you from the, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I had a situation on uh, Friday uh, in New Zealand, and I received a text um, which, which put me in a very difficult position with my brother. And through this retreat, it's always it's been about forgiveness, but it's been such a sticking point for me um and um and then you show this movie about two brothers and it was just oh my god if this isn't proof that jesus is alive and well and uh and and living right with us i don't know what is so i just want to say thank you so so much it's just incredible Beautiful. incredible yeah thank we have to remember to laugh on this journey yeah that's it without a doubt without yeah. a doubt so thank you so much oh thank you jason Thank you. And thanks for your sharing last night. It's, yeah, it's been so beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. Very good. Okay, we have uh, Living Miracle Sedona with uh, their hand up. So, um, let me just see if I can unmute them here. Oh, yes, go ahead. You're unmuted. All right. Hi. I'm Jesse from uh, Sedona, and um, I guess I just wanted to share my experience or my testimony, what I felt like God was showing me as I was watching the movie. I mean, I first watched that movie like in high school, and I loved it, um, and then um, just kind of through a comedy of errors, or I think really spirit guiding me, I actually ended up um, as a counterintelligence agent with the army. Um, so I was doing a lot of those things that like you see on there. And so I, when I watch spy movies now, like I, I have nostalgia cause I see that kind of stuff, but I also have, um, there's also a bit of shame in that because I, I feel like when I was doing the job, I wasn't as serious as I needed to be. And I wasn't like paying attention to what I needed to pay attention to, or there was things that I missed or, you know, so there's like, there's a little bit of like past, um, regret or shame for not being serious enough and so I think that like watching this whole thing come through it was just like you know you did perfect spirit was guiding me the whole time and like I wouldn't have been able to get there if I wasn't being silly and goofy and like fucking off you know where I should have been you know where I should have been serious so um, so that was that was that was kind of cool for me so and then just to have that um, I guess uh uh reinforcement that like i'm on the right path and that it's just a role it's just a game and spirit's always with me so yeah oh beautiful thank you jesse Bye. thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> lovely oh sweet that's sweet okay we have sylvia with her hand up Go ahead, Sylvia. Thank you. Hello, David. Hi there. Hi. And hi, everyone. Um, well, I just feel I, I want to share my feelings about this movie. Um, 
I was so in joy with this movie. I laughed and laughed and laughed. I'm, I'm still having the pain in my body for, for laughing so much. And um, yeah, every morning I, in my morning prayer, I, I ask for, for joy. Peace, love, and joy, that's all I need. And, and today you have given me everything. And to end the day in this joy, perfect. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you, Sylvia. That's, oh, that's such a blessing for us to know that that movie could t t touch you that way. That's so Yeah, beautiful. really, really. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we have Barbara with her hand up. Go ahead, Barbara. Hi. Um, yeah, I want to say ditto. That was that I just laughed. I haven't laughed so hard in such a long time. I just um, thank you so much for putting up a mirror uh, to not take projections to not take the world uh, seriously and 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 just to enjoy you know and uh yeah that was um that was just so uh so much fun and so uh delightful a lot of movies i've been watching have been really serious and and i've been just super super serious and so i thank you for putting up the mirror to um to just not take myself so seriously. Um, and uh, uh, there was a lot in the movie, you know, I saw about what's going on in my life, uh, my life right now. And um, I'm, uh, yeah, the more I find, the, the deeper I say yes, the deeper I commit to taking responsibility for my projections, the deeper I commit to, yeah, forgiveness is the way out. And, and then the more my ego just, you know, hammer, 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 but it can be a hammer job and I can still have fun, you know, it, and, and it contextualize. Yeah. I'm, I'm right in the matrix. I am right. You know, looking for the, the door out and and I'm going through all this stuff, and that's just natural part of the process. But um, so just to just to enjoy and to and to have fun, and my true nature, like my spirit, is I'm a very very funny person, incredibly <laughs> funny. Uh, but I haven't been I haven't been doing that. I haven't been I haven't been feeling that. So it it really uh, sparked. Um, yeah, the part of me that is just a comedian that just loves to freaking have fun and laugh and and uh, not take things too uh, uh, too seriously. And I have a my spirit has a way of uh, just doing a lot of things ass backwards, you know. And especially if I'm trying to have it so lined up to look so proper in front of people, and then my spirit just and uh and uh i've been really embarrassed of that you know like really really embarrassed and yet you know even my elders tell me what an incredible gift that is that gift of of being backwards so yeah i um and also i just want to say about you know the metaphor the symbolism of of the lilies that just touched me so deeply because um I haven't had much of a relationship with Jesus. He's kind of been over, over there. Okay, you're over there, buddy, and that's great, but we're not going to have a relationship. But he, he came to me at a point in my life when I was doing deep work with um, First Nations people, and he told me, you will always know I'm here when you smell the fragrance of the lily and I've experienced that a lot. And then to learn what that really means is so deep about forgiveness. 
Um, and there's so much to forgive in terms of, well, it's all an illusion, but still there's a belief that all these things have happened, right? Uh, to indigenous people. And so, yeah, there's so much to, to, uh, to forgive. So I, I, this was a very, very deep day, but uh, thanks for the joy. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Oh, always a blessing to hear from you. It's, it's a, what a journey this is, and you're so transparent about it. So you're shining a light for so many to see. Yeah, it's, go for it. <laughs> and you're a great example. You're a very beautiful example. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay. We, um, we have Helena Elias with her hand up. Okay, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the series of retreat so far. Yeah, one thing that struck me about the movie um, was like that give me your wallet scene and how he <laughs> he redid it. He, he, you know, he did one thing and then he's like, oh, let me try that again. And then he, I don't know, it just, what it's bringing to mind is just that we can't really get it wrong or there is no wrong and right truly in the forgiven world. And like, it's just for me noticing how the ego can get in on the spiritual um, practices and importance, like the guidance became so important for me. And of course it is, but yeah, even how that became, how the ego can turn that even into a pressure and you got to get it right. And, you know, because it's important, it's our way out, but there's a subtle thing that happens there. And just to catch that and that just, just bringing the lightheartedness about even what we do or the doer or what's done. Cause it's like, or if the prayer is to go home and to wake up and to be in the forgiven, like I can't get it wrong. In the end, it's, it's all working itself out no matter what. It, so it just, it just brought again that lightheartedness to me because I tend to, that's something that kind of can collapse in and I have to watch that piece. So I just appreciate that reminder. <laughs> oh, beautiful, Helena. Yeah, I think, um, I think of everything, that's the most important thing, that you can mess it up, and then to actually start to have some fun with it. Like, you know, he did with the scene at the very beginning about, give me your wallet, give me your money and everything, and he was afraid, then he caught it, and then, then he really started to, he, he wanted to do a couple redos, because he was so excited about the chance uh, to do this, and they didn't know what to think. They were like, this guy's, take the wallet this guy's crazy you know they they were kind of they were thrown off by his joy the the robbers and then in the middle of the movie though he hits his stride where he is so getting into this which i feel like you're going to do this and we're all getting into it when it's a chase scene you know and he says oh let's get into it with the bobbies and then he he's absolutely normally chase scenes you're you're being chased you know is a fearful kind of thing he's like having the most fun he thinks he said i don't think i don't see how you guys are making a dime off of this and then really the scene where he really kicked it up to fifth gear is where in his little tiny mini cooper was when he went and to hit all of the cones <laughs> every single cone and even the ones the police that are chasing oh i always wanted to do that and the other one said yeah, me too. Everybody, the ones doing the chasing that are supposed to be the police officers and him, and then when when they stopped the car, I don't know if you could see the the, his, the, the woman, she was just laughing in the car. She was just laughing so hard. And that's what this is all heading towards, where, where we remember to laugh, you know, we, where we get into such lightheartedness with it that it, somehow it just sweeps us up and then we're in this joy and this laughter and and we don't take anything seriously I, you know so he really got into it and he, he hit his stride and i think that's I, that's why i really enjoy this movie because that's a very high teaching 
you know, that for many people they would say, no, this world is serious and there are many things that are serious and things that you, you know, you, that will, will always be serious. I've had people, you know, tell me, you know, no, this world is serious and it will always be serious. And, and yet as you go deeper into the experience, it just gets happier and happier and happier. And yeah, you hit, you hit the nail on the head there. That's, that's, that's a big hurrah for, for the awakening right there. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, and I just wanted to share it in the spirit of the movie. Um, during Francois' sharing earlier, um, some people just walked into our house here, and they just started yelling uh, someone's name. And, and I just thought that was funny, because I was like, oh, it's just a theater of life. You know, it's like if we were in our roles here, it's like, hey, we're in an online retreat here. You know, like, what's going on? But I, I just thought that was really funny, like, right after that movie, some people just walking in our house and yelling people's names and... It's like, it's just some theater. It got incorporated in the dream. <laughs> yeah, those are those surreal moments when you just, your heart just burst open and you look around you with such gratitude and appreciation. I have to say on this, this trip we took uh, to Reno, we just had, we were surrounded by really happy people. Uh, these, they were all in seemingly their roles of doing their jobs uh, or being uh, at, a, at a Marriott and this and this, but it was almost like some of the people we were with, it just had this feel like you've known them forever, even though you've just met them for the first time and you're, you're laughing together and you're feeling all this, they're joking with us, uh, like we've known each other, like you might joke with somebody you've known for 20 years, they're just joking with, uh, with Jeffrey and I, and that is just good news for all of us, that, that that's available, where, where it can be instantaneous connection, it doesn't have to be this thing that takes years and years or decades to develop, it can, it can be a moment if you just really surrender to that presence. And it's so uh, heartwarming to think that it can be that quick and that natural. So, well, we, I think our time, or they had a timer here, but it's disappeared. So the timer is, when the timer is gone from my screen, that lets me know we're, we're out of time. But, but we have our segment, we have a session tomorrow. And uh, I think Francis, Zhu, who many of you know, she will be joining and beaming in from uh, Mexico. And uh, Andy and Kenneth, thank you. What a spectacular job. What a beautiful vibe uh, you guys are sharing. And, and it's just you're all over your faces. You're just, you're just beaming and radiating there. <laughs> so we just, oh, what a grace. What a grace it's been. So I think I'll just pass it over uh, to both of you in Mexico so you can say, say your final comments and, and uh, then we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, you said it all really, you know, it's just that joy. And that's what that movie's always brought to me. And that's the real joy, the joy that we share. So I just feel so grateful for this. And it's funny, you know, the, the, the theme of the forgiven world, it seems like there's such this serious matter. And yet Jesus has come in underneath it all. Don't forget to laugh. So that's what I'm taking from it. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, that lightheartedness, I feel like, I feel like that's what I want to take away from this too. It's like this journey doesn't have to be so serious and harsh and like this harsh voice in the mind saying like, you're not doing it right, like do it better. And yeah, just taking that in really from this movie and this, this session and the whole retreat, mm-hmm. just really taking that in, the lightheartedness, the playfulness, the cluelessness. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> hearts and waves. 
so much love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so precious. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh.